Well, it's been a week since Shadow and I were out looking for signs to find good places to rock hound. If you watch that video, you'll see that at the end of the video where there was a beautiful sunset, I was standing on a ridge that had really good promising signs. And I was convinced that if I had time, I'd find agates and jaspers there. The problem is uh, that it was getting dark and we had to get back. So we're on our way back to that location. It's a beautiful, beautiful drive. And the road that we're driving on is called Motokua Road. It was built by the mob back in like the 50s. It leads to what was once a resort that was built by the mob. And it was a secret getaway. It's since been sold into private hands, but I suspect there's a few bodies buried underneath there. <laughs> Well, we made it. We found the exact spot that we left last week where the signs were promising. You'll remember the sunset. It was really beautiful. It was right over there. But we're going to start looking for some agates and jaspers and chalcedony and whatever else we might be able to find. This is my friend Paul. Hi Paul. this right here. Well, that's got actual visible crystals that look silvery in that thing. I'm going to throw it in the polisher. This is a big rock, a lot of quartz in it. See these edges are translucent. See what's in it. This is really, really interesting. That is microcrystalline milky quartz. Here's a really big one of the same kind of rock. Well, it's a jasper is what it is. It's a big white jasper because it's microcrystalline. I can even see some banding in there. And it's not translucent or transparent. It's got some mineral in it that's given it that white color. was formed within a volcanic rock, you can tell from all the surface evidence. What have we here? What did you find there, Sir Paul? Another one of those. There's a lot of these. Are you gonna find us some rocks, Shadow? Some pretty ones. Look for the pretty ones. All right, so I am finding a lot of this, and that's definitely an agate. And you can see it was formed inside of a volcanic rock. And if I throw that into the tumbler, it will turn out quite beautiful. I'm gonna keep that one. Okay, so there is a perfect example of chalcedony how it formed inside of a volcanic rock. You can see that it's banded. You can see that it's translucent. So chalcedony is silicon dioxide, SiO2. The geothermal activity takes it into the cavities of volcanic rock. And then with heat and pressure over time, it begins to crystallize, but it's a microcrystalline. And when it bands like that, and it's translucent or transparent, we call it an agate. If it has color in it and it, it, light won't shine through it, then we call it a jasper. So this is an agate. And you can see part of the rock that it embedded itself in. This is a good example. This is beautiful. 
lot of color here. I was right, wasn't I? Did I not follow the signs and find a good hunting ground? So, this is not a rock that would polish up or anything, but I'm just curious. I gotta take it home and find out what the orange is. I can see visible crystals within this rock, but what is the orange? I mean, it's a beautiful rock. I wanna find out. I'm gonna take it back and do some research. I wonder what little critter lives in there. We will leave its little home undisturbed. It's definitely microcrystalline, it's definitely quartz, it's in a host. It's got some different colors in it. Let's throw it in the tumbler and see what happens. That's really cool. Deer up there. I don't know. Well, we made it back with our rocks that we gathered at that spot that the signs led us to. And we're going to mess around with them, figure out what they are, prepare them to put them in a tumbler, and make something beautiful out of them. So I was very curious. There's a lot of this white rock, you know, a lot of this, uh, and this to me looks like a quartz, um, but some of this almost looks like it might be in the opal family, which is also a silica-based rock, but it is a uh, compound of uh, silica and water, H2O. So silica is a compound of silicone and oxygen. SiO2. Opal is SiO2 H2O. Um, the amount of the H2O molecule can vary, but that might very well be opal. Um, and so what I'm going to do is cut some of these up with a saw. And we're going to test them, and then we're going to polish them. Okay, we all know the rules, right? When you're cutting rock, please wear a respirator because silica is very dangerous in your lungs. This is one by 3M, and I can't remember all the details. It's been so long ago since I bought it, but I researched it. It's what I needed. So make sure you do that and eye protection. Luke, I am your father. Let's start with this one. It's really interesting. Well, it has visible crystals. So it, I think it's almost a, I don't know, it's beautiful. It's beautiful, whatever it is, we'll figure it out. This is the one that seemed like it had opal properties to me. Let's cut it open. That's a beautiful stone. Okay, we're here in the kitchen. I didn't clean it. Please overlook the mess. But we're gonna identify these rocks that we brought back from the spot and cut on the saw, some of them, not all of them. And you'll recall this one here, I like to get them wet. This one here, which is a beautiful rock, cut easily on the saw. And I suspect it is an opal. So, first and foremost, I want to make sure it's not a calcite-based rock. Calcite is a softer rock, and it will effervesce in hydrochloric acid, where if it's silica-based, silica will not. 
So let's first test it with some hydrochloric acid and we'll know what it is. It's also important for tumbling because you never want to tumble soft rocks with hard rocks. Okay, here we go. It does effervesce, although ever so mildly. Another little test we can do is a hardness test. Let's see if we can scratch it with a three. I would say no. Uh, four. Yes. So it's about three and a half, I would say. I am concluding that this is a marble. It's a beautiful, beautiful marble. So that's important to know because we would not want to put, wash off that hydrochloric acid, we would not want to put a beautiful marble in the tumbler with a quartz. So this is an eight right here. This is hard. This is a hard stone. I would say it's at eight and a half in hardness. This, this is clearly microcrystalline, white, silica. I don't believe it will be translucent. Well, there are some translucent properties to it, right? So, now it's translucent, so that makes it an agate. What we have here is about an eight on the hardness scale. It's silica-based, it's translucent. It comes from a rock that you can see from the exterior, it was formed inside of a volcanic rock. This is a white um, agate. So this should polish up beautifully. Okay, now, what is this stuff here? Another beautiful stone. And I'm not gonna test it with acid because I'm sure it's not I think it's in the uh, silica family. We'll start off with a seven. Nope. Let's go to an eight. I should keep these in order. Yep, seven and a half. Typical quartz based. It's got some color. I don't believe it will be translucent. Not in the least. But I'm also hesitant to call it a, uh, a Jasper because I can see some some crystals. I I just I think this is almost a granite. I think that's what that is really is a in the granite family. I'm going to do a little more research on that. But I do believe it would polish up nicely. Okay. And uh, now this here, you can see that's chalcedony. And I'm going to throw this whole thing in the tumbler. Now these turn out really nice, but it takes a long time to wear off the host rock. And then you'll end up with what's inside. They're, they turn out pretty cool. 
So I've got several of those that I'm going to throw in the tumbler. Okay, here. You can see the exterior of the host. Inside, beautiful banded chalcedony and is it translucent or transparent? It's a little bit of a big piece. Let me see if I can get maybe a smaller piece. I mean, it's a thin piece of it. You can see on the edges there, it's a little bit translucent. I'm going to throw it in the tumbler and I bet when I pull this out and it's nice and polished and thin, I bet I'll be able to shine some light through it. Okay, and then what do we have here? Again, exterior, that's where this, okay, that's, that's where that rock came from. Well, we found some beautiful rocks. We found beautiful agates. We found some beautiful marble. We found some other agates and jaspers. We found some mystery rocks. We're not exactly sure what they are, uh, but we know their hardness so we can throw them in the tumbler with like hardness type stones and rocks. Uh, we learned a little bit about how to test for the hardness. Also with hydrochloric acid, how to tell if we're dealing with a silica based or a calcite based and flashlight to determine if it's translucent or transparent. Sometimes you got to use a magnifying glass to see if you can see crystals or to see if you can see the hydrochloric acid effervescing. And maybe more importantly than all of that, we had a lot of fun. So I hope you'll come along with us on our next adventures of shadow when we do rock hounding and go to some really fun, far out, remote, beautiful places.